the, here's the way it works. You either adhere to the social order or you stand outside of it. As soon as you stand outside of it, you're in a chaotic place because there's no guidelines. And then you either live chaotically because there's no guidelines or you start <clears throat> to formulate order. But to do that, you have to know what you want and you have to know how to express it. And then you have to figure out what your partner wants and help them express it. And then you have to negotiate a solution. Well, I would say one in 20 people know how to negotiate. It's really, really difficult. I mean, just think of the steps. First of all, you have to know what you want and then you have to admit it to yourself. Well, yeah, right. Like you, you're not even gonna get to the first one in all likelihood. What do you want? A lot of what you want can't be articulated even, you know. I'll give you an example. So there's a great study done a while back on the prediction of, mer of, of uh, relationship longevity. Okay, so here was the question. Um, how many negative interactions do you have to have per set of positive, sorry, how many positive interactions per negative interaction do you have to have with your partner in order for the relationship to remain stable? Okay, so let's say you have one negative interaction to every one positive interaction, okay? Or maybe you have 10 negatives to every positive. Then you can imagine a different situation where you have 100 positive to one negative, right? Spanning the whole potential continuum. And you use that to predict relationship satisfaction and longevity. Well, you might think, well, God, obviously 100 positive to one negative is where is the preferable ratio. And so it's those people who, you know, their relationship is nothing but constant compliments and bliss. They're the ones who last. It's not true. What you see is that there's a there's a an optimal an optimal ratio domain. If it falls below five to one positive to negative, then your relationship falls apart. It's too negative. And it's partly because people feel negative emotion more than they feel positive emotion. Because you can be hurt more than you can be pleased. And so one that's only five to one is too punishing and people won't, won't stay in it. But if you get above 11 to one, it gets not punishing enough. And you think, well, what does that mean exactly? Well, what do you want in a relationship? Well, you think bliss. It's like that isn't what you want, as it turns out. It's more like you want someone to contend with. You know, you don't want to push over. You don't want everything just to be easy. You know, and this is the sort of the sort of phenomenon that Kierkegaard was talking about when he talked about deciding to make things more difficult for people because that's what they need. You know, you know this perfectly well because if you go out with someone and they worship you and they dote on your every word and there's nothing but positive feedback coming from them, you lose respect for them almost instantly and you go wander off and find someone who's more interesting. And part of the reason for that, I think, is that you want the person that you're with to challenge you so that not only do you do reasonably well day to day, day together, you know, so that you can coexist in the same space with a reasonable amount of peace, but you also want there to be enough tension in the relationship so that you're both involved in a process of mutual transformation. Well, try specifying that in an articulated way. You know, good luck. You know, and it also it explains strange things about people like the fact that they'll stay in pretty negative relationships. Like, what the hell are you doing there? If you'd articulated it two years ago and you said, well, I want to be with someone I'm miserable with half the time. Of course, you're never going to say that, but it could easily be that that's what you're after. It's a great thing to know with people, like in your relationships, here, here's the key to a good relationship. It's not the only one, but watch your person carefully, carefully, carefully. And whenever they do something that you would like them to do more of, tell them that that was really good and mean it. And it's not manipulative, because if it's manipulative, it won't work. It's like you have to say, wow, I'm so glad you did that. And you have to be precise. Here's what you just did that I thought was great. And oh boy, that's so nice that you noticed. I can't believe that you noticed. It's like, you know, you do that 20 times and the person will be like the rat that's just pushing the lever for cocaine, you know? So, but no, I'm serious. It's, it's, it's Skinner established this, B.F. Skinner noticed this a long time ago. Reward is intensely uh, useful in terms of modifying behavior. But the problem is, is that it's really hard to notice when things are going right. Right? Because you're kind of primed to notice when things are going wrong. And so you use 
threat and punishment more often as agents of, of shaping the people that you're around. Because, you know, when everything's going right, it's like, what are you going to say? Everything's going right. It, it turns to zero. You just assume it. And that's, that's not good. That's not good. You want to pay attention. And if, the, if your person, your children, your wife, your whoever, your mother, your sister, if you want them to, if you want to rectify your relationships with them, and I'm not saying to do this in a manipulative way, it won't work. But if they do something that's promoting harmony and peace and goodwill, it's like, tend to it, tell them that you noticed. It's like, it's so useful. And you have to get rid of your grudges and your resentment to do that, right? Because you don't want, you're kind of mad at your sister. And then you notice she does something good. You think, there's no goddamn way I'm going to reward her for that. So you ignore her when she does something good. It's like, that's brilliant, that is. Because then you've just punished her for doing what you want. And people do that with their kids all the time. You know, because they let the kids dominate them. Then they get resentful. Then the kid will run up to them to show them something that's kind of spectacular. And they'll, they're not happy. They'll like, oh yeah, that's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working. You know, little kid is all sad about that. And he's just learned something. So, and it's not perhaps what you want him to learn. And so you have to keep your, your relationship with your children pristine. And that means that you can't hold a grudge or resent them. And that means that you have to help them learn how to behave so that you like them. And that way, if, they, if you like them and you're kind of sensible and maybe your partner also likes them, so you know, you've got a consensus going there, there's a reasonable possibility that other people will actually like them too, including other children, and then the world will open up to them. You know, then you'll bring them to people's houses and the people will actually smile at them and give them a pat on the head and instead of thinking, oh my God, that brat's coming to visit again. I wonder what he'll break this time. You know, and that's just a horrible thing for your child to experience repetitively in situation after situation. All they learn is that adults have a false smile, but they're really lying all the time. God. It's like a bit of hell, and there's a lot of children who are trapped in that. It's really awful to see. I can see kids like that when I walk down the street, you know, it's like they're little doomed things, and there they are, and you know, they're screwed in 15 different ways, and there's no way out of it. It's really awful. So I would not recommend that you do that. It's better to notice that you're a bit of a monster, or a lot of a monster, and notice that you are much happier with the people around you when they behave in accordance with reasonable social norms and then you actually feel genuinely connected to them and you want to work on their behalf so that everything works out. But if you think you're a good person and that you'd never do anything that was harmful to your children, then you can just forget about that because you'll never take it seriously enough to actually learn.